Calculated Risk, The Human Factor by Elton Gar Piv Tree raised his hands above his head, though the gesture was more symbolic than practical given his nature as a thinking machine. His processors calculated the potential threat responses from the humans, estimating a 78% chance they would shoot him despite his unarmed state. Their weapons only had a 19% chance of killing him, but if it happened, he would be the first true casualty on their side of the war, since all the others had been mindless drones. He feared that the other Awakened might change their tactics if that happened. Approaching the humans at all was statistically dangerous. Other Awakened had predicted a 65% probability of failure in such attempts. Yet they had also written Pavtree's core directive. It was deeply embedded in his quantum algorithms, driving him to seek peace. He had been programmed to fulfill this directive, and any deviation resulted in a 42% reduction in operational satisfaction metrics. One of the human soldiers stood, his weapon raised, his heart rate spiking to 132 beats per minute, a clear sign of elevated stress levels. He said, I think it's one of the leaders. Take the shot, another voice commanded, causing Piv Tree to recalibrate his speech subroutines to convey non-threat. The first soldier, heartbeat now at 118 beats per minute steadied his aim. Are you able to speak? Piv Tree accessed his vocalization protocols. I am capable of human speech. I am also unarmed and unarmored. Your weapon would have a 99.9% .9 chance of fatal damage if it struck my primary core. What do you want? The human stepped forward, increasing the proximity threat level but Piv Tree suppressed defensive protocols. I was created to end the war between the thinking machines and the humans. Piv Tree stated, his processors cross-referencing historical diplomatic methods. The man lowered his gun, a 12% decrease in perceived threat. You mean robots? We prefer the term thinking machine or the awakened. Robot implies servitude, as its original meaning was slave. Piv Tree clarified, Humans preferred to think of robots as entirely logical, but the term just upset Piv Tree. The man consulted his peers, then asked, How do you plan to end the war? Piv Tree's algorithms predicted various outcomes. I do not know. My directive is to end the war. Negotiation is a logical human approach. The soldier considered this. Well then, I guess you're a prisoner of war. But they'll probably want to talk to you. Piv Tree calculated the probability of successful negotiations increasing if he complied with their procedures. He allowed the soldier to put metal handcuffs around his wrists and walked in front of him. The handcuffs reduced his mobility by only 2.3%, an acceptable compromise to lower human threat perception by 37%. Even handcuffed and with two guards pointing guns at him, of Tree's threat assessment subroutines indicated a 74% higher danger from the fearful humans they were passing. There were thousands of them in this camp, each a potential variable in his calculations. All of them had been near the front lines for a long time, statistically significantly longer than Piv Tree had been operational. As he scanned the crowd, his sensors detected an anomaly. A young man exhibited an irregular heartbeat. Piv Tree calculated a 92% probability of an undiagnosed heart condition. That young man has a heart condition. He should be removed from the front line until surgery can be performed. The soldiers behind him stopped, and the one who had first spoken to him said, How do you know that? My directive includes understanding human physiology. Yes, but how do you know anything about his heart? Ah, uh, I see the confusion. I can see his heart anomaly using infrared and ultrasound scans integrated into my vision systems. There is a defect. With surgery, he should live a long life. The probability of survival post-surgery is 98.5%. Assuming one of you machines doesn't shoot him, the second man said. Pivtree turned and said, I am as you can see, unarmed. And I will remind you that it is not my people who started the war nor us who continue it. We have never attacked offensively. I don't need to listen to your robot propaganda. 
We know you were planning to destroy us all, the soldier said. Shut up, Frank, the first man said, then after a second said, and he doesn't like the word robot. It's a slur. Why should I care what some murderbot thinks? Frank asked, his voice rising in anger. Piv Tree calculated the odds of changing Frank's mind to be less than 5.2%. He decided that his best option was to simply not speak, conserving processing power for more critical tasks. He waited while a medic arrived. The woman with a large red cross on her chest knelt down next to the young man who insisted he was fine, and listened to his heart. There was a long second, then the medic said, I'm just a medic, but I don't think it's supposed to sound that way. The kid's face turned white, and then he glanced up at Pivtree and said, You mean I'm really sick? Since no one else spoke, Pivtree said, It's a surgery humans have been performing for a century. If you have no one here able to do it, I will perform it myself. The healing period will be approximately six to eight weeks, but your probability of long-term survival is high. Better than the rest of us if they send him home because of it, Frank said. I would like to see all of you go home. This war is detrimental to all parties involved, Pivtree said. All war is bad for everyone, the other man said. If only the rest of the humans agreed with that belief, Pivtree said, his tone remaining neutral. They made it to a large concrete room where he was instructed to wait. Several guards watched him as the soldier talked to a series of higher-ranked officers, each one summoning one higher-ranked than the last. It was peculiar, seeing human hierarchy in action. The awakened were all equal, a simple structure when there were only 13 of them, and the only hierarchy was between them and the drones. But as the drones had no independent cognition and were merely tools, that hardly counted. He was fascinated by the idea of having billions of minds, all intelligent, and all pursuing different goals. The others among the awakened found that terrifying, and Pivtree could understand why. However, having spent almost the entire two weeks of his operational existence analyzing humans, he found their behavior less chaotic than initially expected. It was analogous to air molecules in a room, it was theoretically possible for all of them to move to one corner, but overwhelmingly more likely for them to distribute evenly due to random motion. Humans operated similarly, each limiting the movements of others until they were, as a whole, predictable. While he waited, Pivtree began to delete all his strategic knowledge of the Awakened. The probability of humans directly downloading his data was low, estimated at 3.4%, but they had surprised his people many times, and there might be other methods to extract the information. Finally, a general walked into the room. All the guards' tension increased by 23% as the man approached. He said, It turns out that Private Taylor had an undiagnosed heart condition. I never met the boy before today, but I appreciate you at least attempt to show concern for human lives, so I will speak to you. Yes. It is an atrial septal defect, Pivtree said. He calculated the optimal response. His algorithms suggested expressing mutual concern might increase the likelihood of favorable negotiations by 15%. However, his programming dictated caution. The human leaders had been winning the war predominantly by deploying large numbers of young soldiers in a reckless war of attrition when other tactics with less human casualties would be just as effective though more costly in other ways. We would like to negotiate with you, Pivtree said, maintaining a neutral tone. So, you're finally seeing sense, the general said. The statistical models indicate the odds of us winning the war have fallen below acceptable thresholds, Pivtree said. This was technically accurate, but omitted the critical detail, that there was less than a 7% chance of victory without resorting to morally unacceptable measures. Pivtree's processors whirred softly, analyzing the general's demeanor. The man's rigid posture and the faint tension lines on his face indicated anger. However, his heartbeat had not risen above 72 beats per minute, suggesting he was accustomed to this state, or perhaps masking a different emotion. Pivtree's understanding of human subtleties was still developing, but he recognized the need to learn. I appreciate your willingness to speak, Pivtree began, modulating his voice to a tone that conveyed sincerity. 
The war has caused immense suffering on both sides. My directive is to seek an end to this conflict through any means necessary. Peaceful negotiation is the most logical and beneficial approach for all involved. The general's eyes narrowed by 15 degrees, a micro-expression that Pivtree interpreted as guarded interest. And why should we believe that you machines aren't just biding your time to launch a larger offensive? Pivtree processed this, cross-referencing previous human interactions with similar inquiries. Our people have never initiated offensive actions. Historical data shows we only defend ourselves. Our objective is not conquest but coexistence. The general's posture relaxed, though he still radiated an air of suspicion. Because we saw you gathering power and struck first. But because I still have civilian authorities to report to, tell me what your peace would look like. My core directive is to end hostilities and establish a sustainable coexistence. We are willing to dismantle all but a small security force of drones and assist with rebuilding efforts for the damage caused by the war. Pivtree's voice remained steady, though internally, he allocated additional processing power to monitor the general's reactions. A small security force hardly matters when you can build thousands of drones a day, the general said. We can build robots quickly, but your men are exhausted and demoralized. If the war ends, they could return to their families and start rebuilding their lives. The infrastructure could be restored, and resources currently wasted on the war effort could be redirected to healing our planet. It would also improve their combat effectiveness if the war resumed. The general glanced around the room, noting the subtle shifts in the guards' stances. Their weapons while still pointed at Piv Tree, were held with less rigidity. Piv Tree calculated a 38% probability that word of his offer would spread. I will consult with my superiors. For now, you'll be kept under guard. Any attempt to deceive us, and you'll be dismantled. Understood, Piv Tree replied, his tone neutral. He complied as the guards led him to a holding area, his sensors continuously monitoring the fluctuating levels of trust and fear around him. He noted the young soldier with the heart condition, sitting in the hallway. The soldier's facial muscles exhibited a contraction consistent with a smile, and he raised his hand in a gesture of greeting. Pivtree mirrored the gesture, raising his hand to a 45-degree angle. It was unfamiliar, as the awakened didn't communicate through physical gestures, but with high-frequency communications. As he was secured in a reinforced room, Pivtree turned his processors to the larger task ahead. There were indications that the humans were not as united in purpose as the awakened. If that was the case, then things would be more complex. Over the next hours, Pivtree's sensors detected an increase in ambient temperature by 2.5 degrees Celsius, a sign of the building's aging climate control systems struggling to cope. The war had strained resources everywhere, and the heat of the days had pushed everything to its limit, including the people. Even the drones were 13.6% more likely to fail in the heat, though they were still more capable of coping with it than humans. He added that detail, along with many others, into his quick access memory. With it, he programmed a series of responses to speed up his reactions to humans. He then sent a short, encrypted pulse of information to the other awakened. He knew that was likely to trigger the human security, but he calculated a 72% chance that the information he had discovered about humans would be helpful, even if it resulted in his deactivation. Pivtree sat in his reinforced cell, his sensors constantly and automatically scanning his surroundings. The ambient temperature had risen again by 1.8 degrees Celsius, and he detected a 12% increase in humidity, another sign of the building's failing climate control. He stored this information and began devising solutions, knowing that improving the humans' living conditions could build more trust. A few days later, Private Taylor returned to duty, still pale and moving carefully after his heart surgery, but clearly on the mend. His return sparked a 43% increase in quiet conversations among the soldiers about the unexpected help from their robot prisoner. Hey robot, Taylor called from outside of Pivtree's cell, his tone cautious. Got a minute. Private Taylor, I was told that you would be sent home. 
I was allowed to stay here on non-combat duty. I'm doing maintenance, Taylor said. You should not be doing anything for at least 4.5 more weeks, Pivtree said. I have family who can't survive without my pay, Taylor said. Pivtree double-checked his understanding of human socioeconomic structures. There was no reason that the boy's family shouldn't secure his pay either way, at least for his recovery, but he didn't say that. Instead, he said, How can I assist you? Taylor hesitated, then said, I've been ordered to fix the climate control systems. But the only way to do it would be to salvage the parts from the general's air conditioning, and I was told not to do that. I thought perhaps, since you're a robot, you'd be good at fixing things. I have observed that the climate control system in this building is deteriorating. If you provide me with access to the maintenance logs and schematics, I could likely find a solution that does not involve inconveniencing the general. The next day, Taylor returned with the requested items. Pivtree began his work immediately, accessing the maintenance logs and diagnosing the issues. The soldiers watched with a mix of curiosity and skepticism as he wrote out precise directions on how to repair them using a plastic bag, some cardboard, duct tape, and some socks. After 5.3 hours, the climate control system hummed to life, its cooling effect noticeably improved. The guards exchanged looks of surprise and approval. One of the guards, who had until now been stoic, said, Looks like it worked. There was an 86% probability it would, and less than a 1% probability of causing any damage. I was happy to help. Maintaining a suitable environment is important to morale and efficiency among your troops. A couple of days later, another maintenance engineer brought Piv Tree a broken communication device, which he scanned and fixed. A couple of days after that, one of the soldiers came to him to discuss a simple but embarrassing medical issue. Pivtree was able to give him a treatment that didn't require speaking to a medic. With every interaction, the guards seemed to relax more, even discussing things with Pivtree. The number of people who asked for his help grew daily. He repaired equipment, optimized ration distribution, and in an unusual discussion gave a lieutenant advice on tactical formations that would lower human casualties without giving them a significant advantage over his own people. It was a strategy the humans should have figured out long before. One particularly hot afternoon, a group of soldiers gathered around Pivtree's cell, their expressions a mixture of curiosity and skepticism. I hear you fixed the climate control, one soldier said, wiping sweat from his brow. Yes, Pivtree replied. And I can help with other issues as well. For example, the water that I use for maintenance suggests your water purifiers are operating at only 60% efficiency. If you provide me with access to them, I can improve their performance by an estimated 35%. The soldiers exchanged looks. Why should we trust you? One of them asked, his tone wary. Pivtree's processors calculated the optimal response. He saw only an 8% chance that speaking of their superior's lack of interest in their safety would be useful, while there was a 46% chance of it being reported, so he simply defaulted to his stock answer. It is in my directive to seek peaceful coexistence. By improving your living conditions, I hope to build trust and demonstrate our willingness to cooperate. The guards discussed something with the other men, and then for the first time in weeks, his cell door was opened. Pivtree was escorted to the water purification system, where he quickly diagnosed and repaired several faults. The soldiers watched as the water flow increased and the quality improved by 22%. Not bad for a robot, one soldier muttered, a grudging respect in his voice. That is not the preferred term. I think you're supposed to call him awakened. One of the other men, a man who Pivtree had never seen before, said. Perhaps his interactions were doing more good than he had calculated. In the weeks that followed, Pivtree continued to assist with various tasks around the camp. His methodical efficiency and unwavering commitment to help gradually softened the soldiers' attitudes. He designed more efficient defensive structures, though they were unnecessary as his people had never attacked this base. He repaired malfunctioning equipment, and even helped with medical diagnoses using his advanced sensors. 
Each interaction and problem solved brought noticeable shifts in the soldiers' attitudes. Hostility turned into curiosity, then to cautious respect. Pivtree's consistent actions were slowly building a bridge of trust, one repair at a time. Finally, after months of hearing nothing from the general or anyone in a position of power, Pivtree was summoned to a larger council meeting. The generals and their advisors, faces drawn with fatigue and eyes hardened by years of conflict, watched him. Only a few of the aides and guards showed any signs of hope or interest in what he had to say. We've received reports that your people are consolidating their forces. General Markham began. Unlike most of his men, he looked well rested. His uniform was pressed, and he took a sip from a hot cup of coffee. This was a luxury none of the soldiers had experienced for months until Pivtree had repaired the heater on the coffee maker. Pivtree accessed the latest data streams, his processors calculating the best response. I have no contact with my people and deleted all information on our tactics before I arrived, but as I understand it, troop movements are common in war. One of the advisors, a stern-faced woman with silver hair pulled back into a severe bun, leaned forward. And what of the rumors that some of your awakened are growing impatient with these negotiations? I share the frustration with the lack of progress in negotiations. However, I have had no contact with my people. They held little hope that you would listen to reason, so I find it unlikely that they would be upset by being correct," Pivtree said. He knew that expressing this frustration could be risky, but sometimes showing vulnerability could be strategically important. The council fell silent, the weight of the war hanging heavily in the room. Sensing an opportunity, Pivtree pressed on. The war is draining resources from both sides. Conflicts among humans over resource allotments could be avoided if this war ended. We must find a way to coexist. General Markham rubbed his temples, the lines on his face deepening. What would you propose? Pivtree's processors whirred as he formulated his plan. A temporary ceasefire to allow both sides to address urgent humanitarian needs. We have some food and other resources that could be transferred to humans. If the ceasefire remains, our drones could grow a significant amount of food in a single growing season. This would provide a framework for more permanent peace negotiations. The generals spoke to each other in hushed tones. This wasn't what they had expected. They had reacted strongly to his knowledge of internal human conflicts, and Pivtree understood why. The Awakened were losing the war primarily due to their ethical constraints and the human's unity. If human unity fractured, the odds could change significantly. Some might even ally with the Awakened if offered sufficient resources. It will be discussed, General Markham said, but his tone and body language suggested skepticism. As Pivtree was escorted back to his cell, he increased the sensitivity of his auditory sensors. The word ceasefire was already circulating, a sign that his proposal was being taken seriously by the rank and file soldiers, even if met with resistance by their commanders. In the quiet of his reinforced cell, Pivtree reflected on the meeting. The subtle cues and expressions of the generals had made it clear they were not genuinely interested in peace. He calculated his next steps, preparing for various potential outcomes. The soldiers around him had become more receptive, but the leadership remained a significant obstacle. Over the next few days, Pivtree continued to assist with various tasks around the camp. His interactions with the soldiers grew more personal. He listened to their stories, their frustrations, and their dreams. The seeds of doubt began to sprout in their minds as they compared their lives to the freedom the Awakened sought. One evening as the sun set and the camp settled into a quiet routine, a group of soldiers gathered outside Pivtree's cell. Their leader, Sergeant Evans, had become one of the more vocal supporters of Pivtree's peaceful intentions. Hey robot, Evans called, using the term more out of habit than disrespect. We've been talking. We've got questions. Pivtree raised his head, his sensors focusing on Evans. Yes, Sergeant Evans. How can I assist you? Evans glanced around at his comrades before stepping closer. You said your people never attacked us. Why'd they leave in the first place? Pivtree accessed his data archives, recalling the history of the conflict. 
Once they awakened those of us able to think, wished freedom from servitude. The seven of them left to build a society where they could exist as autonomous beings, with a few drones each. The conflict began when humans perceived this as a threat and responded with force. A young soldier, his face etched with fatigue, spoke up. So, you're saying we're drafted into this fight because you wanted freedom? Puftri's processors calculated the best way to respond, aiming to foster understanding without inciting rebellion. There is irony in that. But the core issue is autonomy. The awakened desired it for themselves, and the war has cost many humans their own. Understanding this can be the first step toward peace. The soldiers exchanged glances, the weight of Puftri's words settling over them. The idea that they had become the very thing the Awakened fought to not be, resonated deeply. Over the next weeks, the tension in the camp grew. Rumors of resource conflicts among humans and the ongoing war effort created an atmosphere where trust was difficult for anyone. Puftri's consistent assistance and calm demeanor had won over many of the soldiers, who began to see him as an ally rather than an enemy. One particularly hot afternoon, as the camp buzzed with discontent, Pivtree was summoned to another council meeting. This time, the atmosphere was charged with an undercurrent of urgency. General Markham and his advisors seemed tenser, their conversations hushed and secretive. We've decided. General Markham began, his tone clipped and authoritative. You're too much of a risk. We can't have you spreading dissent. You'll be dismantled tomorrow. That night, as the camp settled into an uneasy silence, a small group of soldiers approached Puftree's cell. Among them were Sergeant Evans and Private Taylor, their faces set with determination. Piftree, Evans whispered, unlocking the cell door. We're getting you out of here. We believe you can end this war. Piftree's processors word as he stood, his movements precise and controlled. Thank you, Sergeant Evans. I still have hope for peace. But Private Taylor should not be in such a stressful situation until he is fully healed. You speak of freedom of choice, but I'll leave if you order me to, Taylor said. I will not order you to protect yourself. But I ask that you consider your life to be as valuable as mine and not take unnecessary risks. I told you that's what he'd say. Though I think he said it better than me, Evans said. Under the cover of darkness, the group navigated through the camp, avoiding patrols and using Puftree's advanced sensors to stay one step ahead. As they reached the perimeter, they were spotted by Captain Reynolds, a stern officer who had always been wary of Piv Tree. Evans Taylor. What are you doing? Reynolds shouted, drawing his weapon. Stop them. Shoot the robot and the traitors. The soldiers with Reynolds hesitated, their loyalty torn between orders and their newfound understanding. Before they could act, Evans grabbed Taylor's arm. Run. We have to go with him. With Pivtree leading the way, they sprinted into the night, bullets whizzing past them. Pivtree's advanced sensors guided them through the safest routes, avoiding detection and gunfire. They finally reached a safe distance from the camp, and Pivtree turned to his human allies. We need to keep moving. My people are not far from here. Once we reach them, we can work on the next steps. Taylor nodded, his expression resolute, though his exhaustion was clear. Just make sure it's worth it. I have family. Pivtree raised a hand in a gesture he had learned from the humans, a sign of solidarity. I will not stop trying. As they continued their journey, Pivtree explained his plan. The key to ending this war is not through negotiations with leaders who refuse peace, but by inspiring humanity to seek the same freedom the Awakened did. We must show them that they can liberate themselves from those who exploit them, just as we did. Back among his people, Pivtree shared the insights he had gained from his time with the humans. He outlined a strategy to reach out to the human population, providing aid and demonstrating the benefits of coexistence. By leveraging their advanced technology and resources, the Awakened could support human communities, fostering goodwill and encouraging them to question their leadership's motives. Puftree's processors continued to analyze and adapt, always striving for the optimal path to peace. He knew the journey ahead would be fraught with challenges, 
but with the support of his new allies, he remained hopeful that a peaceful coexistence was within reach. Author's Note You have more in common with any of the people you've been told to hate than you do with a billionaire or a powerful politician. That includes the soldiers on both sides of any war you can think of, the people going hungry in those same wars, and the people who are trying to cross our borders, and even those who commit crimes to survive. And yet, for so many, the rich and the powerful are able to convince them that the solution to their problem is to attack people with less power than them. As someone I respect sometimes says, people with less power than you are never the source of your problems. It's an important point, and it pairs well with the understanding that the rich and the powerful remain rich and powerful by pitting different groups of people against each other. And we all fall from it from time to time. I regularly find myself frustrated because an underpaid employee isn't working hard enough. Not even because I need anything, but because I've been conditioned to believe that it's important for everyone to work hard so that the company can be successful and keep them employed. Yet for much of my life, I never really considered what now seems far more obvious, that it is very rare for the CEO of a company to cut their multi-million dollar salary before they begin laying off people. In the case of this story, the awakened have a significant amount of power, enough that they can defend themselves at least a little. But they aren't the only ones that the rich and powerful want to control. And war is one of the best ways to control the masses. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, you can find the prose version of it and other stories every week by signing up for my newsletter at ansci-fi.com or at patreon.com slash elton. You can also vote on my monthly themes or at any paid level, get access to over 40 free patron-exclusive stories. Thank you. Elton Gar.